Hi, I'm Paul Heaney, Editorial Director for Fluid Power World, and joining me here today is Vicki Gonzalez, who is CEO of Next Mannix. Thanks for being here with me today. Well, thank you, Paul. She's brought some products to look at, but I, I, I wanted to start, Vicki, with talking a little bit about, uh, you had some sobering DOE statistics that we were talking about earlier, um, as far as compressed air, and there's a lot of inefficiency out there. Can you share that with our audience a little bit? Absolutely. So the DOE estimates that manufacturers spend over $8 billion in electricity each year wow. compressing air. Okay. So 70% of manufacturers use compressed air to make their products, mm -hmm. and they estimate that the efficiency of compressed air systems is less than 20%. 20%, that's crazy. It is, and so what that means uh, for a manufacturer is every dollar they spend, they're getting less than 20 cents worth of work. Mm -hmm. And, and I know one of the most, let's say, inefficient uh, components out there is, a, is the directional control valve. I mean, you go in almost any plant with uh, compressed air and you hear that hissing noise, and that's, that's not a good thing, is it, Vicki? Well, absolutely. I mean, these have been around for a really long time, mm -hmm. Paul, and basically um, they're the workhorse of, uh, you know, pneumatics and actuation. But what they do is effectively, every time they cycle, one side pressurizes and they exhaust everything sure. on the other side. Yeah. And so you've got, um, in a manufacturing site, you've got one valve that on average could exhaust 34,000 times a day. A day? And you hear that, and you multiply that by 1,000 valves, you can imagine what kind of waste that is. This isn't some hidden waste either, it's right in front of us. No, we consider the directional control valve the biggest leak in, your, in, in a facility. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your technology. <coughs> Yeah, so we are uh, really excited about what we've developed. Nexmatic's directional control valve has a way of recycling compressed air. And all the magic is in the body okay. of um, the valve. And basically what we are able to do uh, in a center position is connect the two downstream ports. Okay. So instead of the way a traditional valve works, mm -hmm. they pressurize one side and mm -hmm. exhaust the other. Sure. We have this center position where we connect those two ports and everything on the pressurized side starts charging okay. the other side. Okay. So we're recycling that air. That takes milliseconds. Okay. And on average, we can recycle 20 to 40 percent of the compressed air. Oh, that's impressive. Now how did you test this out or how did you uh, prove the design worked? Yeah, so it's been tested in multiple facilities outside okay. of uh, our laboratory. It was invented at Vanderbilt University. Oh, nice. And uh, the inventor is Michael Goldfarb, okay. uh, who is actually a world-renowned um, scientist in the prosthetic area. Hmm. So <laughs> he invented this um, in, the, in 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. And the test that he developed to, to compare it to conventional valves mm -hmm. was basically to take a tank, isolate that tank, and look at how many cycles you can get out of a valve with a given mass of air. And so you put a conventional valve on, um, you run that test, and you just count the cycles. Mm -hmm. And then you put our valve on, and you run the exact same test, and on average, we can get 50 to 75 percent more work out of that same mass of air. Oh, that's impressive. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, for a user who might be interested in, in putting this on his or her system, um, is it pretty easy? Is it pretty difficult to, like, you know, swap out if they have a, a directional control valve currently on a machine? You know, how, what, what's the process for buying one of your valves yep. and putting it yep. on that same machine? Well, as, as everyone in this industry knows, there are thousands of different mm -hmm. types of valves. Uh, one of the things that we've done and we feel very passionately about is um, standardizing the footprint. So okay. the manifold um, that, the, that our valves go on are ISO manifolds. Okay. So we have uh, developed ISO valves. So it's kind of plug and play, would you um, say? It is plug and okay. play. So if you've got an ISO manifold and um, these are a particular size, mm -hmm. then you can literally just take your current ISO valve off, put ours on, two screws and you're good to go. We've got the electronics set up so that there are no other changes by the customer. Awesome. Now, obviously a lot of times uh, ISO is not really well promoted mm -hmm. or known in the industry in the United States. It's mm -hmm. much more prevalent in Europe. Mm -hmm. 
And so, uh, so if you do not have an ISO manifold, you do have to change out the manifold in addition to the valve. But we, we have made those manifolds um, plug and play as well. Wonderful. Yeah. Vicki, can you uh, tell us where uh, our readers could find more? Do you have a website where they could go to to order or, or read more about your valve? Sure. Um, the website is nextmatics.com. And um, there's actually a demo uh, of, of the test that I described oh, nice. uh, that, the, that people can see. And we will um, be launching an e-commerce site in March. Wonderful. Yeah. And as always, you can always visit uh, www.fluidpowerworld.com for more engineering videos. Thanks for being with us today, Vicki. Well, thank you, Paul.